Virginia Woolf once said that on or about December 1910, human character changed. This quote, uh, uh, well, shows uh, this difficulty in finding a point of origin or a conventional date to talk about uh, uh, the beginning of uh, modernism. With the term modernism, uh, we mean a cluster, so a group of artistic and literary tendencies. So it is different from modernity, which means the historical period characterized by drastic changes at the turn of the century, so between the 19th century and the 20th century. In a simple way, we could refer to modernism as a reaction of artists and writers to the drastic changes that characterized this period of time. So, uh, let's see what changes we are talking about. We are talking about uh, uh, the, the change in city life. Trams, buses, the underground train, cars, the Model T built by Ford meant the affordability of a product that extremely changed uh, daily life in the urban setting. So then we have changes also in the home because of the appearance of domestic appliances such as the vacuum cleaner. So again these innovations had a deep impact on daily life. We are also talking about the age of communication, because at this stage, at the turn of the century, we have a cheap and plentiful printed matter, such as magazines, newspapers, books, and so products that encourage the spread of, well, knowledge, or the making of opinions, the making of a public opinion. And then we have in this field of communication, so that we can call this age also the age of communication, the invention of the telegraph, the telephone, the radio, films, the phonograph, and also the beginning of television. In this period, also travel became quite easy, well, easier than it used to be, because of the already mentioned trams and buses and the underground train and the cars. But think about traveling in the air, like airplanes and Daily flights started after the First World War, which gave a great impact also on civil transport, on civil aviation. So we can read modernism as a range of different responses to the technological advances and to the rapid urbanization experienced across the whole of Europe and also elsewhere at the turn of the 20th centuries. Cities uh, like uh, Paris, London, became the center of this change. And artists, well, they set out to represent this kind of change. So, even if it's difficult to talk about a particular style, so a modernist style, and it's better uh, to move from a notion of modernism to one of modernisms, so a set of often contradictory and sometimes even irreconcilable movements that are common in the whole of Europe and also across the Atlantic. So. Even if it's difficult to pinpoint just one modernist style, it's also true that this sense of crisis and this will to innovation are shared by all forms of modernism.
So we can list these common features starting from an aura of difficulty and formal experimentation, forms of complexity and density, the exuberant celebration of the machine age, and also a break with the traditional modes and subjects, so subject matter, the evocation of dynamism and speed, we mentioned the car, and also a sense of crisis or apocalypse, a sexual openness, skepticism about traditional, social, moral and religious values and systems. And then we can add an interest in alternative cultures, for example, from Africa or the Far East, and an extreme confidence in aesthetic doctrines. So these artists truly believed in their own, well, philosophical world of art. And then a suspicion of progress, rationalism and notions of a fixed identity, which represented, well, the framework of the Victorian age, which is thus completely dismissed. Now, we shouldn't really believe now that uh, the Victorian age is dead. Well, of course, these revolutionary artists dismiss the forms of the Victorian age. But literary forms and popular forms of entertainment still resist. So we shouldn't really think of modernism as the most uh, popular attitude towards culture at the time. So we shouldn't really have this distorted picture of the literature of the period. These are voices like James Joyce, T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound and Virginia Woolf were a small band of very active experimentalists. But they were often considered as degenerate they were criticized because of their surrender to subjectivity and also for their cold formalism. And sometimes they are also accused of being elitist, so of writing for intellectual people or to write like in a very sophisticated and academic style, which is not democratic, which prevents the ordinary man, the ordinary human being, from understanding what they are talking about. So people like uh, James Joyce, T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound and Virginia Woolf have certainly left an indelible trace in the literature, well, in world literature. And now that we are used to so many of the innovations that they have introduced in the world of literature, maybe we, we cannot really evaluate the extent of their experimental attitude. And so we can consider also modernism a strain in literature that maybe hasn't ceased, it hasn't stopped, even though many people consider the Second World War as the end of modernism. But this, uh, well, this tendency to experiment has probably become a part of what it means to be modern. <laughs>